Hi, I'm Dr. Harriet Quinscoggins from the Division of Population Medicine at Cardiff University, and today I'm going to be talking to you about the process evaluation of the Abacus 3 trial. So a bit of a background. We know that patients from low socioeconomic groups are more likely to be diagnosed with late stage cancer. Previous research has told us that this can be down to a number of factors. People from deprived communities are more likely to have a prolonged time to symptom presentation. This means that from first noticing a symptom, they are likely to wait longer to first contact or visit their GP. They are also more likely to have lower knowledge and be less aware of symptoms that they should act on. They often have strong fears or worries about going to the doctors because they have fearful and fatalistic cancer beliefs. And they have other competing factors or barriers in their lives, such as access to transport, to get to the doctors and caring responsibilities for others which can make it harder. Therefore there is a need to develop interventions to improve cancer outcomes that act on these beliefs and behaviours for these communities. To that end the Abacus Health Check was developed. The Abacus Health Check is an interactive touchscreen questionnaire that covers three domains, common cancer symptoms, screening and risk factors. The questionnaire is completed by the participant with support of a trained lay advisor. Dependent on participant answers and results, the lay advisor delivers tailored behavioural advice to the participant through manualised behaviour change techniques. At the end of the questionnaire, participants receive a printout of their personalised results using a traffic light system. Green results suggest no change is needed. Amber results suggest action needs to be considered. And red results suggest action needs to be taken. The Abacus 3 randomised control trial ran from 2017 to 2020 in South East Wales and West Yorkshire with this embedded process evaluation. Adults aged over 40 years were recruited from healthcare and community settings. All participants, 234, completed a baseline questionnaire upon recruitment. Following this, they were randomised one to one to either intervention or control. Those in the intervention arm went on to complete the health check described previously. All participants completed follow-up questionnaires two weeks following recruitment and again at six months. Results from the main trial will be covered by the presentation by Professor Capering. The aim of this nested process evaluation was to assess intervention fidelity, dose, contamination and contextual influences. The process evaluation consisted of three main data sources interviews of lay advisors, interviews with participants and observations and audio recordings of health check sessions. Semi-structured face-to-face paired interviews with our three lay advisors were conducted post-training and post-intervention delivery. Semi-structured telephone interviews were conducted with a purposive sample of participants two to six weeks and six months post-randomisation. Participants were selected to cover a range of the following. Trial arm, the lay advisor who had delivered the session, recruitment setting, so healthcare or community, age, above or below 60, and gender. Interviews were audio recorded and transcribed verbatim. Interviews were uploaded to NVivo 11 analysis software and thematically analysed with 20% independently dual coded. A purposive sample of 20% of health check sessions from the intervention group were audio recorded. Recorded sessions were sampled according to lay advisor and recruitment setting. 50% of this sample were additionally observed, so 10% of the overall intervention sample. A standardised health check observation form was used to record the delivery of behaviour change techniques throughout the session and descriptive analysis performed. Overall, six lay advisor interviews were conducted with an average length of 60 minutes. The three main themes identified were training, recruitment and delivery. I'm going to present on two key findings of interest here, personalisation and contamination. Being able to personalise the intervention to meet the needs or interests of the participant was key and lay advisors felt that this really increased positive engagement. However, they felt that this may have also distracted participants and diluted from the main messages and therefore come at a a cost to the trial. Contamination. The baseline questionnaire was delivered prior to randomisation. Often questions in the baseline questionnaire 
would cause participants to question their assumptions and beliefs before answering. They would often look to the lay advisor for their thoughts or ask some questions, so the baseline could have been acting as a small intervention in itself. As well as this, the lay advisors witnessed a lot of discussion between participants who had taken part in the study, not always from the same group. For the study, this could be contamination between the arms. However, just taking part caused positive social diffusion of the key messages between people. Often participants would talk to people who had not taken part about what they had learned and showed them their results pages. We conducted 37 semi-structured telephone interviews with participants. 15 of these were at two to six weeks post randomization and 22 were at six months. Interviews often lasted between 20 to 40 minutes. Normally those that were longer with the, were with participants who had received the intervention rather than those in the control arm. The main themes covered in these interviews were knowledge, contamination and social diffusion and behaviour change. Again, I picked out some high level key findings to discuss here. Regarding knowledge, participants reported having high cancer symptom knowledge prior to the intervention. They often accounted this to having a friend or family member with cancer. However, when explored further, this symptom knowledge was often around those better known red flag symptoms such as lumps and bleeding. Participants reported increased knowledge and awareness of those vague, lesser well-known symptoms such as fatigue or change in appetite following receipt of the health check. The biggest reported change in participant knowledge was associated with prevention behaviours. Participants would jest, oh well I knew about smoking, but would express surprise about the other behaviours such as physical activity and diet and their links with cancer prevention. As mentioned earlier, we learn even more about negative study contamination and positive social diffusion from the participant interviews. Participants in both the intervention and control group were aware of local and national cancer awareness campaigns, which could have caused some contamination. Participants also reported the effects that the baseline had on their knowledge and symptom recognition. The questions prompted them to think again about answers and test their assumptions. This was really quite strong for some participants. There were instances where participants from the control group thought that the baseline questionnaire was the intervention. A majority of participants discussed talking to family, friends or people in their wider social network about taking part in their results. Of course, this could have caused an issue if someone else had taken part and was in another group. However, as a positive, some participants reported that this was the first time they had had an open conversation with others about cancer and how they did not know how to do this before. They could use their experience of taking part in the study or their results to open up that conversation. Participants in the intervention group reported increased motivation and confidence to improve their behaviours, especially around diet and physical activity. They also reported that they would seek help for a concern sooner, and when they did, they would have more confidence in doing so. Some participants reported additional needs such as physical disabilities that prevented them from increasing physical activity. They said that the lay advisors were very supportive when delivering the information and explaining that the important thing was that people were doing their best and that they were not judgmental at all. The final set of data is related to fidelity and dose of the intervention. So this was a way that we could measure that the intervention was delivered as we hoped it would be. To do this, we conducted seven observations of intervention delivery sessions and audio recorded 12 sessions across the three lay advisors. When considering these results, it's important to consider context such as time limits of appointments, engagement levels of participants, and allow for different delivery styles of the lay advisors. You can see from this table that the duration of the sessions, the average health check would take just over 30 minutes, but we have one outlier at 75 minutes, where the health check advisor had a participant who was extremely hard to keep track of. So this is what happens when you deal with the public and people, and of course they have different interests. Results from audio recordings and observations suggest that the intervention was delivered with high fidelity, the sessions were structured as expected and the appropriate order of questions were followed. We found some variation in how many results were discussed. All lay advisors consistently delivered the red and amber results, however there were some differences in delivery of the green results due to time pressures. 
it's important to note that the delivery of information of these was suggested but not mandated. There were variations between lay advisors. This could have just been that we had a small sample of recordings and observations for some advisors compared to others, but we think that this could also be related to the advisor's background training and their experiences. In summary, the intervention was delivered with high levels of fidelity and the expected dose. High participant self-report of symptom awareness was consistent with baseline ceiling effects found in the trial primary outcome. Whilst personalisation increases participant engagement, it may dilute core intervention symptom messages. And the intervention reached much further than just those who received it through positive social diffusion. People wanted to share their experiences and what they had learned to help others. So thank you for listening. I would just like to quickly take this opportunity to thank the trial team in its entirety and all those participants and staff who contributed to the Abacus 3 trial. I would also like to thank the funders Yorkshire Cancer Research.